This area is protected by World Guard. Nobody should be able to enter and yet there are people in here. As always, lots of hacking stuff is happening on the server, but before we talk about that, let me catch you up on what has happened since the last episode. I'm here at my second favorite place on the server, the item sorter. It's really complex and I didn't quite understand how it works, but I finally figured out where the design is from. It's from my Zuma games, I linked the channel below. I've been binge watching some of the design videos, really cool stuff, but back to the server. Hopefully you remember, I had developed an anti-human plugin that checks if the coordinates of players are specific strict values. This is supposed to prevent human players from joining and only allow bot movements. If imprecise human movement is detected, the player is kicked. I thought it's foolproof, but turns out it's not effective. First of all, you can see me, I'm moving on the server, so I managed to bypass it. And of course, so have many others. The server is very active with players. And this causes some issues. Let's head to my favorite place on the server, the spawn area. Nothing here was built by me and that's why it's so cool. On any other anarchy-like server, the spawn is always completely wrecked. And of course, we are getting more and more griefing attempts, but the community here is defending it hard. So let's do our part and help clean up some of the mess. Griefing on the server is actually a very interesting topic. I don't want to spend time on banning people for grieving, so eventually it will happen. But usually on survival servers, you have the extreme power imbalance between normal players and griefers. The griefers join with hacked clients, they can fly around, speed hacks, super fast placing blocks, while the regular players are on foot, slow, and cannot even attack them in the air. But on this server, it's different. Everybody has hacks. Cleaning up the mess can be automated with bots and flying makes reaching the places easy. Look at this crazy bot from enderkill98 cleaning a lava cast. But there's even more. Bots at spawn actually have a built-in surveillance system that logs every valuable block getting griefed. Let me show you. So here's the rainbow beacon and underneath the protected obsidian is the actual emerald pyramid. Now let's grief one of those emerald blocks. Boom, here, the live underflow bot, which is not me, I don't know whose bot that is. It announced that live overflow broke a block of emerald at the beacon. And look at this, I immediately get called out, don't even think about it. And these messages are also related to an unofficial Discord server, so it doesn't take long and they show up to check on what the F I'm doing there, ready to strike me down. Also, there are a few known griefers and here is an automated system warning everybody that they were sighted near spawn. It's crazy, I love it. As you can see, despite no plugins against griefing, I think the accountability through logs and the power for the defender also using hacks or utility mods made the spawn survive for this long. It's very fascinating to observe. However, the interval of griefers joining is slowly increasing and I wonder how long the spawn will be defended. But until then, I'm just here enjoying the music at the concert hall. Which, by the way, is another cool project from this server. Epic Player A10 improved the notebot and the code even got merged into the Meteor client. Love to see their engagement. Now on a different topic, several players ask me about whether there's a way to get a Club Mate bottle in game. Unfortunately, there was not. So to be a good respected leader deserving of a statue, I had to find a cool way to give players a bottle. And luckily I had an idea. This is the story how I found a world guard bypass. There will be spoilers now, so if you are a player on the server and you want to learn something, try it yourself first. You can always come back to the solution later. It's a lot more fun to find the bypass yourself. So anyway, let's go. It all started with my anti-human plugin. In the last episode, I went over a bit of Minecraft server code to show you how the plugin event system works. In the anti-human plugin, I register an on-player move event, which supposedly is called every time a player moves. And in that code, I check if the player has human or bot movement. But when I was reading over the event calling code, immediately I noticed something fishy. So this code is in the server game packet listener. This is executed every time a player sends a movement packet. And here they create the player move event object and calls every plugin which registered to that event. But just a few lines above this part, there you can find this if case. Prevent 40 event calls for less than a single pixel of movement. 
To implement this here, they calculate a delta movement, basically the distance between the last known position and the new position in the packet. And then they only go into this if case with the event trigger if the delta is large enough. Immediately my alarm bells went off. Can we maybe move without triggering an event, not enter this if case? I guess you already know the answer, but before I tell you more about how it works, let me show you the challenge I built around it. At the coordinates 1337, 1337, I created a floating island and a small ruin. The idea is that in this area, similar to the anti-human check, a plugin will check if a player is inside this area using the on player move event. If a player is detected there, they will be teleported out to the floating island with a kick message showing exactly what the check is. So a very simple region protection plugin. Now if a player really manages to reach the chest in the ruin and interact with it, they will get awarded a club mate. I thought the challenge was foolproof, but it didn't take long and I had to learn the hard way developing protection plugins is very difficult. First I had to watch, in shock, that when players move inside a minecart, the player move event is not triggered. Instead the on vehicle move event is called. Okay, fine, you got me, I gotta extend the code, but that was not all. Turns out that when the vehicle is not moving and you just click on entering it, your player is basically teleported into the minecart, not triggering a on player move event. Only if you write the minecart that is triggered. So you can start teleporting from minecart to minecart. Now it's not that simple because moving your camera also triggers sending a player move packet, but unfortunately every typical cheat client includes a feature to stop sending out any movement packets. So now the only movements happening are basically only the server teleports when clicking on a minecart. That's bad. And this also led to the next discovery, which is ender pearls. You can also throw an ender pearl into the area and it triggers the server to teleport you. If again you block any other outgoing movement packets, you can use ender pearls to move around in the area, go to a chest and get a club mate. And that was still not all. I really had an actual bug in the code where I forgot to check the world when opening a chest at the correct location. I checked that the region protection only applies to the overworld, but I forget that with the chest reward. So players figured out that they can place a chest on the nether roof and start farming club mate bottles. God damn it, why is it so hard to implement a basic region protection plugin? And so at this point, too many players were able to bypass my plugin without the intended solution and lots of Club Mate bottles were out in the world already. Kinda sucked to be honest, but that's also fair game on a server for hackers. However, it was not all a bad experience, because Philip, as well as Guildfesh and Ada, two very well known and experienced Minecraft hackers, they solved it the intended way. So it's true, there is a way to move in Minecraft without triggering the move event on the server. And the crazy thing? Guildfesh and Ada immediately knew how to solve it. Because as it turns out, the issue wasn't new. But more on that later. So after this fail attempt of creating a cool challenge, I decided to look around some more. Being able to not trigger the event handler seems to be something that could be a big issue for many plugins. So I started to look into some region protection plugins. The first one being World Guard. Maybe they solve the other issues of ender pearls, cards and animals, but still have the player move event issue. I open up the code and take a look how it's implemented and it's right there. They use the on player move event. Hmm. So I set up a test world and installed World Guard. Define the region with a flag to prevent players from entering. You can see I cannot walk towards Herobrine. But let me show you my exploit. Do you see this? I'm able to walk towards him. Almost there. Let's try to kill him. But well, that doesn't work because of the disabled PvP in the area. But point being, I walked over there. How did I do it? I'm sure you noticed the flashing screen when executing the bug and that has good reasons. So let's go back to the code. For every move packet, the server calculates here the distance between the old known position and the new position in the packet. If it's small, it doesn't trigger the event. So it seems simply just move very, very, very slowly, but actually that doesn't work because this last position is only updated if the delta was large enough, which means when you slowly move, last position stays the same and eventually you will have moved far enough for the delta to become too large, triggering the event. But immediately I thought, 
Well, I can just disconnect and reconnect again, right? Just walk a few tiny steps, less than delta, log out, log in, everything will be reset again and I can walk another tiny bit. This should work. And this was enough for me to think of building the first challenge. There's definitely a legit way to walk tiny bits without triggering the event. But after playing around with it a bit more, another thought came to my head. If you send an invalid move packet, for example, when you try to move very far away, the server will reset your position with the teleport. This effectively works like the relock, it will reset everything. And that's why you see me flashing. I always move a tiny bit and then try to move very far away, triggering a teleport back to the current position and move forward again. So all that is left, you just have to write some code around this and then you can move in the protected area. Crazy. So I went onto the server and started building ruins near the spawn. Inside of it is a Club Mate fountain, which is a lava pool and the goal is to die in there. And the area is obviously protected by World Guard. I thought this looks really cool, but people started messing with it and flooded it overnight, turning lava into obsidian and I didn't want to turn on fluid protection in World Guard due to performance hits. So I moved the ruins to almost build height up into the sky as a floating island instead. But what do players get when they solve it? Because everybody got a Club Mate bottle at this point, I had to think of another reward. So I implemented a name prefix. If you bypass World Guard and die in the Club Mate fountain, you get awarded the hacker prefix. And you can see many people on the server have it. It was very cool to see how slowly the players figured it out. Also, my solution is pretty bad. It works, but it's very slow. But some other players started optimizing and getting every little piece they can out of it. Look how fast Jerry Lum is walking through the area. It's crazy. And here is Philip. He was one of the first people to solve the challenge as well. And it was also really fun to watch him optimize his bypass over time. Amazing. So is this a serious zero day world guard bypass? Well, I already mentioned that this issue is not a zero day. Guildfest showed me this hack forums thread from 2016 Minecraft 1.9. Fly bypass almost any anti-cheat. And see what they write here. Basically you can move less than 0.0626 since it won't fire any events. Then you teleport into a block or the void to reset your position and then move less than 0.0626 again. The whole process doesn't fire any events and you can move any way you want. It's exactly the issue I discovered when reading over the plugin code. You can see this issue is or was known in the Minecraft cheating community since 2016. So how come World Guard is not patched against this? Or why has Paper not patched it? I have a few thoughts about that. First, the impact for World Guard is not that bad. Areas are still protected from griefing and PVPs, it's just entering bypass. And that's not too bad to be honest. But besides World Guard, of course it might bypass some basic anti-cheat plugins. But also the flight is very slow, the negative impact is probably not that high. But what about paper patching it directly? Of course the whole delta calculation could be removed and an event triggered on every move packet. They claim it has negative performance impact, but this is definitely something that could be checked. How often are these tiny movements even happening during regular play? So maybe paper would put this behind a config variable whether to always trigger the event or always change the delta amount. Another fix idea might be to make the server reset teleports to go back to the last position if they are set instead of the current player coordinates. But in the end, the server maintainers who are a lot more experienced with the code and know what else might break, they have to decide if they fix it or not. And not fixing it, I think is totally fine as well. It's probably not a serious issue if it has existed already for over six years. But if the community decided to not patch it, I think it must be very clearly documented that this is a potential issue. Plugin developers need to know about these details so they can make sure they design their plugin around this. And so here I did my part. Hope more people know about it now. Cool, we found a World Guard bypass. So this is the end of my video. But the more time I spend with the project, the more I realize there are so many amazing projects happening on the server and I want to give players a chance to showcase what they have done. And in this episode, I introduce you to Dark Reaper. He started on the wrong side. He joined the server and started griefing. But he really came around and tries to be a very productive member of the community now. And I very much appreciate that. 
and that's why he will be the first showcase. Take it away. I have a fork of Bleach Hack, which I renamed to Dark Hack because of my nickname. There are actually a lot of people that use Bleach Hack on this server. I noticed that from speaking to some. The first module that I made for the server was this I am bot module, which allows me to move uh, by rounding the position. I also had to make extra mixing just for vehicles because if I would enter a boat, it would kick me. And as I use boat fly quite a lot, I had to implement that. Second module that I added to bleach was a uh, eventless fly. I have two modes for that because some plugins are more strict than board card. Board card allows you to move inside of a block, but uh, some plugins don't. So I have a strict mode, which uh, is kind of slow, but allows me to move even on those strict plugins. And I have a free mode that is a bit more free as you would say. Um, so if I enable it with fly, I can move pretty fast through the region. Next thing that I would like to show you is a sign restorer. So basically, I took uh, this repository that was created just for restoring signs on Life Overflow server because I broke them so I noticed that some very skilled people on the server made a sign restore mod, but it didn't have highlights. So you didn't know where do you need to place the signs. So I added support for little render that just renders the blocks that needs to be replaced with sign it will now show me that there's a missing sign and when I place it back and this is handled by the code of green scripter it will automatically write down what was there before it works by using this JSON file where there are coordinates and a message and the last thing that I would like to show you that I modified for the server is Notebot. I added little GUI when I go to UI and enable it. It will show me what blocks have to be placed down. I can disable the UI by going to Notebot menu and disabling it by selecting it. One more thing that I added is called KSP, but I did that for 1.19. This works by searching for skulk sensors. If there's a skulk shrieker in nine blocks radius, it will show the blocks around in the red, which means I can't step on these blocks if I don't want to activate the shrieker. So if I would put this uh, sensor a little bit further away, it wouldn't showcase the blocks in red. So only the sensors that are dangerous for me will be shown in red color. So now I can place blocks here without a problem, but if I would put it somewhere here, it would get detected. That's it for this video and thank you for watching.